Greece. <laughs> okay. As we said, the, um, it was more the, the show found the artwork than the other way around, or the artwork found the show. I'd already started the work. I'd had one of these panels lying around for ages, and I started doing a, a um, representation work on my, based on my Inland Sea series, which is like the, the ship stranded in the, in the desert with a guy in it, which is sort of inspired by the um, combination of the crisis in the Darling in the late, in the 90s, late 90s, the public, and um, the idea of the searching for the Inland Sea as a, like a metaphor for the future. The um, inability of European Australian society to really appreciate our environment and still, after 200 years, still not understanding their environment at all. So that's another story, that's another painting. That was what's, that's what's underneath, which was a long thing. And I was really pretty much over that, the figurative work, and I just started working in abstraction again last, this last year. And so we went across, across offline and started out like that. Part of it was very dark, and part of it was sort of red and warms. And I just started abstracting from that shape. And mm, that's all right, I quite like that. And so that long linear process, that seam going through it, was the core of the idea. But the idea was there before the idea of, you know, coal seams. It just happened that over its evolution, that the show and the, I guess, the, um, Intuitive. Well, I guess you've got that, that landscape line in the dark, the colours that came from leaving behind the, the last lot of work, and the process of hiding the, the black seam under the, uh, burying the seam under the, physically under the, um, the surface layers and the strata, created the, physically created the whole idea of a coal seam. So it was, I said that. It was serendipitous that the um, show came up as the work came up and sort of gave it a reading. The other elements in it is it's not just a compilation of one point of view or one position. The work's sort of built like Topsy. I did one, then I did two. Initially, my idea, idea was to show them as a long linear piece, and that's still, potentially, is still there. The painting can be shown as a long linear piece, not just a compilation in that direction. So it has a multiple perspectives where you can take a piece. So there's a different time aspects of it and there's different spatial thinking, spatial ways of thinking about it. So it's not just that one set landscape. It's a lots and lots of possibilities in the landscape or the or the picture of the story. You know. The picture's not just one, one point of view, it's many points of view. So, <coughs> we've got the idea of that very deep dark blue there, and I think I started building that, it's actually blue, not black, to give that effect. This is a very deep layer level of um, Prussian blue over and over, so that's really how, having seen a fair bit of coal in my time, and texture, you see when the good, the place of that wood coal comes up, it's actually quite, it does, has that feel about it. Again, that wasn't a conscious effort to make, um, make it look like coal, of course, it's not just, you know, I wasn't trying to express the idea of coal in a rock, it's really the idea of that seam running through layers of geology, layers of time and history, layers of um, Society, because depending on your point of view, it's either, yes, it is a geographical thing, you know, looking down sideways through it. You've got these sort of symbols for the, the claws or the, the graders or the pulling away of the, the thing, so they have that, that meaning, that sort of pouring away look. You have the layers of different signs going through the network of, of the space. So you can read it as, you know, there's an underground mine, strata, coal, blah, 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 straightforward meaning that way. Alternatively, if you look at it, I guess, in the vertical on the sideways at the same time, if you look down into the, the, the um, open 
cut pits. If you look, think of looking from above, you've got that, that going down into the earth from, you know, from the surface within the countryside and the impact that, you know, that culture and all the activity, how that operates within, you know, within the landscape. So you've got you know, the going through traffic, houses, big holes in, in the countryside, between the vineyards, whatever. <laughs> Moving through suburbs, into the city. When you get to the city, if you go to Newcastle, you see um, Carrington and the harbour. So you've got that inland version of the other end of that scale of the, of the coal process coming out and going into part of you know, building the town, being exported out through the harbour. So you turn around the other way and look at head towards Newcastle, if you're in Carrington, you've got the harbour. You've got the little cutouts where you know, the structures that take place in an urban, industrial urban space. Oh, that's even a bridge. <laughs> so you have that element of the social and economic interaction that takes place as part of that, that sort of, the whole environment that's, that's found with that, that scene that runs through it. And, that, and that's a historical scene because in you know, 200 years they've been digging coal out and it's been the central part of the city. The, uh, sort of the, the, the old the history around here, with some of the, reason, the towns are here because of the coal really. The, um, the structures that, that have evolved, the industrial structures, all the spaces, the urban spaces that are there as part of that process of having a, having a resource, having a community that builds around it, having the, the structures and people and then the dynamics that come from when you build buildings and build, build roads and all that sort of thing. So that's the many, that's on that le level. There's also, because it's in panels, there's a the time element of it. So you're moving through time and space. There's another evolution that changes over time. So, and that time can be changed. And just simply by changing the direction of these pieces, you can turn into a very long linear piece extend that time element so you suddenly you have a scroll in, in the way that Chinese um, painting was often done over a long time and the, un, the unwinding of the, the scroll gave you a time, gives you a time element to the, the artwork. So in the rather sophisticated way that the Chinese art has that, that's taken the Western art to discover, <laughs> you would unwind the scroll and you would move, have to move through space to take in the artist's journey through the landscape. And so this gives you that linear, particularly in the other way, it gives you that linear reading where you have to move through space to, to take in the artwork. The other thing is, that's only one story. There's another entirely different story that goes with it. That's an entirely different city. So, but they can currently sit there. The only one that knows um, Ultimo and um, around the harbour, White Bay, and even going down to Bondi, there's, there's an overlay story of that there as well, which you can read just as easily as, the, uh, as that. So I, I'm quite good to have, I can carry two completely con contradictory ideas in my head at once and put them down on, on, on canvas. And that's the beauty of abstraction. It's really found in, you know, it creates patterns and the mere suggestion of title, you can change those patterns you recognise. So, you know, you've got the silos of White Bay are there as well. And that, there's the um, the bridges are tucked away in different places. You've got the what could be the um, what's the name the monorail thrown in there as well. But this is this is like a secondary while I was creating imagery, I was able to entertain both those ideas at the same time and integrate those images. So you can actually look it's like you can look at something one way. And you can see some things if I describe them to you, put another title on it, and describe it another way, and then you can see those alternate things. In it. So it's very much up to let the viewer to find their own their own patterns in it as well, which is one of the joys of um, abstraction. It creates patterns, and our minds fill in the space. In fact, you can actually see one of the big. I was buried one of the big trucks in there too. 
and you can see another photo, and you can see the, the shapes of one of the um, coal ships fitting in there. So, depending on how I, you know, the lead that I give you, or an impulse that comes to you on your side, you know, from another reference, there's an opportunity to find lots of different things in there, which I think is rather intriguing. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, that's pretty much enough talking from me. Does anyone have any questions? I've talked to you into, into a stunned silence. Is the planning plan, Steve, to have um, to be able to entertain the two landscapes into at the same time? Well, it's, and it comes. You know, have it. And presented in one painting, that's got to be a challenge. That's a massive challenge. It's an organic process. It's simply it's following. Heading. Well, you really just put. Start at that one point and just let it. It's really a matter of moving, responding to the stages. So what you see. In the same way, the process of, you know, you take things and you, you put them together. Yeah. And you take some things away. But at some point, you saw White Bay and started entertaining that vision. Is that how it happened? Or? I, I held the two ideas and I built, because they had similar, the idea of the um, harbour and, yeah. and the coal scene, the coal, the coal scene. And another bit of history is I did a commission for a, a, um, a developing, development corporation in Newcastle a couple of years ago and they wanted a, a, um, a painting of the, <coughs> excuse me, a painting of the harbour from their, their particular point of view. So I did a lot of research aerial research and computer research just to, to build that up. So I had those patterns, that part of it all put away, put oh, aside there. Yeah. And you know the whole like, the dynamics of the harbour, because you know, growing up in, in the valley and you know, I used to go down and take photographs of the steel works you know, before I started drawing and painting. So I knew the inner city harbour and the patterns of it, which are quite intriguing the way that you got to look at Carrington and um, and you look at White Bay and all the way that harbours develop out of a natural landscape. They're really intriguing shapes and patterns. And they're dynamic patterns of movement and activity. So there are commonalities in both those things. And also in that the water, the coal seam, you know, they're they're similar. They take have the same role, they have the same visual, the same sense that they're going through surrounding strata of things. And that sets it's a core that things build around, build across. So um, structurally they're similar. I so, like your comment that you can change the title and people will read something totally different. Yeah, yeah. it's the same with any art. You, once you recontextualise it, you're going to allow different readings of it. You can both, you know, some of them will seem absolutely absurd. <laughs> it's not like a random thing, but, you know, it's thought. And you can set cues for people. And, yeah, and it just depends on how you look at things, what you see, which is a bit zen, really, I suppose. <laughs> Is it fair to say that this is the direction you'll be heading in from here on in? Or no, I'm maintaining characteristically um, Gemini. I'm just reporting on classic Gemini. Right. No, I'm, but I'm maintaining my puberty work in the black and white because I, have, I really don't like abstract drawing much myself. You know, in terms of it doesn't do much. It doesn't do much for me other than start a process because it doesn't have the sexiness of paint, which is really why. It, I like, like the, um, the abstraction. It's really got a that just pushing in the movement and engaging with the colour, just the immediacy of it is it's just really fabulous and sexy. Um, the black and white, I'm revisiting my, a lot of my paintings that I've got in a cupboard that I was never really happy with as finished paintings, but as drawings are coming back as, as um, really interesting works. And in between, I'm doing the digital stuff. So, um, which is, they're essentially abstract work, based on which I manipulate. I'll take a sample from my original paintings. I'll take a small section and work, rework them on the computer. So they'll, they'll be, I'll multiply them, or twist them and bend them. So I'll create abstract works on the computer and do lots and lots of repetitions. I use the, I use the, the computer a lot to do my sketching these days in terms of new works, because I can do maybe 50 works in a night Whereas you, if you're going to just draw a variation, you could do maybe one or two a day. So I've got thousands of, of drawings. And um, <coughs> I'm thinking of different ways of presentation for them. I did the, um, 
the Greta project last year, which is an Australia Council sponsored and New South Wales Arts sponsored um, excuse me, school program with um, Greta Public School. Where I was there for um, two terms and I worked with the kids using the, the teaching, the sort of, sort of innovative teaching process I've developed using music and movement to get back to the origins of drawing and creative thinking and teaching both of them at once. So we popped away for two terms and we found that in using the teaching process to create, give them, free the kids up and let them learn how to, the physical language of drawing again and the, I guess, giving them the freedom to do things other than what the teacher thinks, they think the teacher wants them to do. They produce this amazing work and we put it all together. And then we transfer to, I wanted to see if it would, if it wasn't just with that, whether the creative thinking carried forth from another medium, we took it in, in, into the computers and using a basic painting program, we got the kids to produce these amazing artworks and they were able to do it and transfer things they learned and the freedom they established through the, drawing, the basic drawing process and they transferred it with great success to the computer, which is really exciting and the work they do is brilliant. So there's that aspect I'm pursuing in that way. And I'm also bringing out, I was talking with Virginia about the idea of the picture, you know, the, the fluid picture frame and just having digital art as its natural presentation form being on that frame. So you sell the frame with the digital work. So you get a series of works that just move through or they stay in one or you have a, you buy a series, you buy it as that. So you, you put it on your wall as, a, as an artwork and you've got a time-based artwork or you've got the static artwork you want. You put it through all your machines or whatever. We at Green we practice that with um, we use their smart boards as as um, an exhibition space. So one time we set the whole school up with all their smart boards with all their work through the space through the whole school. So it became a gallery. I'm using that as a as a picture on the on the wall and exploring that concept. So that's one of the, the sort of installation things. Another of is using the imagery and turning it, going to commercial printers and using those technology you have to produce really good um, digital banners and things and displaying the work on the banners and in different ways. So I've got a really cool one I'm thinking of for my show, which I'm, I'm experimenting with now. So yeah, so I'm sort of as usual over the shop. And I'll do sculpture if I get the time, but I don't have the time. <laughs> anyway. Thank you.